So you've seen what we're going to build and uh, the first thing I always do is, a project like this anyway, I'll actually work to a sketch and the sketch was pretty much up to me. I just then vaguely know what I need to do then I'll ink it out so I can see it a bit better from a distance and make sure that I put on there the various dimensions. It just helps things later on to make sure you've got enough timber and, and all the rest of it. I always get my um, large sheet goods cut down by my supplier. It makes life so much easier, A, in the workshop and also in, in transportation terms. So you notice here I've to put the, the two sides of what will become the, the unit back to back um, in a sort of a, um, a book match fashion. That means I can reference off one face and mark it once with all my measurements. And then I, what I'll do is use a large T-square transfer those marks all the way across onto the, the opposing face. So even if my measurements are a little bit out, they should be both out by the same amount. So rather than a wonky shelf, I'll just get a shelf that might be you know, a millimetre or half a millimetre too high or too low, which won't then be noticed in the finished um, project. I've also marked the, the thickness of where the shelves are going to go. I always do that because historically I've got a tendency to if I just mark one line, I might go above it on one and below it on another and it throws the spacing out. Now all the, the shelves will be dominoed into the sides of the carcasses. That's to basically provide a bit of strength and alignment. Later on when this is fully put together, I'm actually going to just push screws, two inch screws all the way through the sides of the 18 mil ply into the end of the um, shelves, glued it, dominoed it, and that won't be going anywhere. Notice how I'm using a block of wood between my guide clamp and the base of the domino just to A, assist where it's going to be and also it means I'm referencing off the same surface, either the top or the bottom of the shelf to translate that into the carcass. Once all that's happened, one of the kind of disadvantages with dominoes I find is you, when you do your dry fit, you've then got to take all the dominoes out again, but you know, it's horses for courses. I use slightly larger um, dominoes for the 18 mil, so they're actually 20 mil long, uh, which means they're 40 mil dominoes, which means they push out the side of the carcass. That won't matter for this project because it's going to be enclosed, which we'll see later on. A few of the shelves I wanted to be flush with the front, so I had all the shelves cut to the same depth, which was about five or six mil too short. Um, so I'm putting a bit of edge lipping on here, solid timber, and just gluing it on and taping it until the, uh, the glue holds. No dominoes, no biscuits or anything like that because it's going to be trimmed flush both sides. So I don't have to worry about if it becomes a tapered part, if I'm going to you know, make it just flush on the top with an overhang as with the previous bookcases, which you might have seen. I don't even bother pinning these in. I just leave the glue to dry with the tape. That's more than strong enough for um, this. And then I use my router with a, a bottom cutting flush trim bit, um, but it's not got a bearing on it. The bearing's actually on the, the base plate of the router, as you can see there, and that stops me from sliding too far into the work. Set the depth, and the base has got, you can just about see it there, like an extra piece of material underneath. So the, the bottom of the router's on like a step, so it's raised above the work, and then the cutter comes down so that it cuts nice and flush. Just checking that the the cutters at the right height and then just run it straight across. You're only taking less than a millimeter off here. Um, it's just much quicker than just sanding alone. Still needs a good sand though. Um, the whole lot gets sanded down and then it's primed, two coats of primer and then ready for assembly. All this work was done in the workshop. Obviously you can see that, um, but it was actually assembled on site um, after delivery to uh, to go back to the client's house. So this is the finished job. Um, you can see the end panel that's put on there. It's actually a decorative um, button bead panel to match the existing kitchen work. And then I knocked up some molding just to kind of finish it off and tie it in. It doesn't match exactly, but it's kind of close enough to sort of replicate the existing moldings. It's obvious that it's an add-on but you know, it, it works nicely. The customer's was, uh, was chuffed, so that's the main thing. And if you want to see that panel door being made, um, there is actually a, a video on that and how I make panel doors. 
just needs painted by the client. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you back here for some more videos very soon.